The presenting sponsor for On Education is Classcraft. We're so excited to announce Classcraft's new story mode, which makes it easy for educators to harness the power of stories. But that's not all. Have you ever wanted to see yourself as a character in a story? Now teachers and students can create their custom game avatars and see them come to life on an augmented reality poster. To learn more about Classcraft's story mode and the new AR experience, simply visit classcraft.com. And I've realized the more trust and belief you put in your kids, the more they can change the world. So we're here at ISSI with Kathleen Beachford and Marin Dawes. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Woo! Hyped. So go, Super hyped. So are we. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about why you're here and what you're doing. I'm Kathleen Beachford, and I am giving a talk um, at the Terrace Ballroom on Monday at 1.30 for the TED Masterclass. I'm giving a TED Talk on student empowerment, and it's entitled Students Were Made to Be Heroes. Mm, love that. I'm Marin Dawes, occasionally referred to as the Marinja. I am <laughs> Kathleen's lieutenant, second in command. I have lots of opinions, and I'm here to back her up. I'm also growing my social network, so thank you so much for having us on your show. That's yeah. amazing. You're giving a TED Talk. Yeah. Have you given a TED Talk before? <laughs> uh, middle like, school? Like no. Like a TEDx I, or anything nope, like that? never. Um, that's amazing. I just talk a lot in front of middle schoolers, and... They're a demographic that's very hard to entertain, so apparently I'm pretty entertaining. <laughs> if I can keep eighth graders entertained, I guess I can do anything. Well, and to be fair, your yeah. life is also insane, so... Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, do, you just have stories to tell, because it's like, yeah, that's what happens in your life. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. With, with seven sense. children, yeah. <laughs> well, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, seven children. Did you get to hear the story? <laughs> no. Yes. No, but this like... Is what I, you get, so this is what you get when you come in late to badge someone. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I kid you not, like, having seven children is like the, like the exposition. Oh my. It's the this beginning. This is the beginning oh. yeah. of... Yeah, I, as soon as you started speaking, I was, I was drawn in. Crazier from this. Yeah. So I can see that a TED talk master class yeah, uh, talk I, I want to go to this <laughs> yes because I want come. to actually hear this these stories and, and especially the way you just pitched it to me which you should pitch the audience like what is it kind of give us a little bit of what is it that you're going to be talking about well uh, the big why in education we so we teach students and everybody has their own reason but the biggest thing is that I was telling you guys about is the fact that we teach people and brawny wear like with people we backwards design eventually we're all gonna die and and I know like dun, <laughs> just, dun, dun. okay just That's true just, just went really a dark si just as a side <laughs> note though brawny wear was a palliative care worker in Australia. So mm. like she was a professional at helping people and come to the end of life wow. smoothly. Yeah. And that is yeah. kind of where we were inspired. Yeah. And so she studied people and she studied the regrets of the dying and she has her own book out. And the number one regret of people as they were dying was the fact that they did not lead a life true to themselves. Mm. So people are going through life and they're having teachers dictate to them. And then they think that that's okay. And they lead their lives that way. And then when they die, they want to go back and do it again, but there are no yep. do-overs. Mm. And we need to address that in education. If that's the number one regret, we need to backwards design to fix it. And we need to fix it now because that matters more than anything else. Not the what they want to be, but the who. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Yep. Mike Charles. <laughs> <Sorry. Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> no. Exactly. no, so we so we kind of got together and um, through also an unusual means, <laughs> the algorithms of Twitter, all hail. And, nice. and we kind of started talking about like, you know, something is just really, really missing and we're digging and we're tossing out ideas. And finally, Kathleen's like, do you ever look at your kids and just think, my God, you guys are going to die. And I was like, <laughs> dun, no, dun, dun. <laughs> no, I typically don't actually. That's not my first thought. But then, you know, we, we kept talking about it and it's like, OK, actually, it does make sense that if we're saying our our business is in people, then we've got to think about people beginning to end. And it's not fair to say, oh, well, you have to learn all this stuff because somebody told me that you have to learn it. Yes. That's not really what we should be doing with we our time. We need to teach what matters most to the people. 
And I, I think I would say my connection to that came because when I was in my mid twenties, out of a blue sky, I was diagnosed with kidney disease. Wow! And had a doctor look me straight in the eye and say, "Like, we're not sure what type you have, and you might not have three years. So just heads up, like we're going to do these tests, but between now and then, you're going to need to figure out what you're going to do with your next three years." And I think that brought the cognitive idea of death like slamming home. So then when Kathleen was like, "We've got to teach kids how to live their." how to live their best possible lives right now. I was yeah. like, absolutely, I'm in it. Yeah. Like that abs- abs- absolutely. So that's the overarching theme of the book then. That's how Sue? we start off. Uh, it's, so tell, it, what's the title of that book again? 10 Keys yes. to Student Empowerment. Unlocking the Hero in Each Child. I love nice. it. I love that it's like a 10 word title. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah it's well, a subtitle We've talked title. about this. <laughs> That's fun. And give us more about that the, Marketing. the theme yeah. that you were, you were about to speak so to. So the overall um, theme in the entire book is the fact that we say we want to give students agency, but still teachers are in control. And honestly, I sucked at teaching. Like I was so bad. <laughs> Like uh, I, I had one kid one year just say like, "Is this really your dream job?" Like, well, I don't think you're doing I think this right. I, I think yeah. I started out being compared to a drill sergeant, yeah, which at yeah. the time I was really excited about because I'm like five foot three, so I was yeah. like, "Yeah, drill sergeant." And then later it's like, "No, eh, that's not so." Well, good. my exciting thing was like, "Yeah, I'm getting through all the content in the year. This is awesome, and the kids are unhappy, but I'm getting through the content. Test yeah. scores. Yeah. That's very common. common. Yeah, I mean that actually would." probably resonate with a lot of people as far as uh, a successful year would be that you got through all of the content you were supposed yeah, to get right. through. Which, yeah. which feels okay at the beginning, yeah. right? First couple yeah. of years, you're like, yeah, I'm doing the work. Woohoo, I did it. But over time, and we were talking about if you're going to live your best life, what does that mean? It's, well, really, that means in the story of your life, you've got to be the hero. Yeah, because yep. yeah. defining, like, your defining moment as a teacher should not be, yes, I prepped all my kids for standardized tests. Yeah, well, my defining moment came from the fact that we don't really trust students. And uh, here's the big thing. I really didn't. And I didn't find out that I didn't trust them until a kid came up to me one day and said, Mrs. Beachboard, I don't want you to die. And we just learned in health class that being overweight is really unhealthy. I had been overweight my entire life. I weighed 285 pounds. No way. And she's, yes, I mean, way. she's I'm not. Really I'm cool. like, the reason she's why. She's not that audi- much taller than me, right? O- like. Audience, as I'm, <laughs> as I'm looking at you right now, I mean, I don't want, I didn't even want to, you know. What an amazing you, accomplishment. As I'm look, I mean, I'm just saying that that just sounds amazing. Crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and that's part of my TED you. Talk. Yes. Um, so th- this kid was like, I, I love you. So how about we track your progress in front of ev- the entire class, and we weigh you every week, and you let us, you trust us to take you on as your as a project. But what they didn't know is I had failed at losing weight my entire life. Yeah. I even went through three miscarriages, and I, all I lost was four pounds. Oh, my God. And so with that, like, I... I let my kids know I'm like I'm a failure and they're like you know what anybody can fail but we're gonna push you through it and they did and so I lost all that weight I ran a 5k with my students that's chapter one you should (laughs) start launch into chapter one this is already (laughs) I'm like sitting here like yeah we go from there holy wow yeah keep going and and so I I did it with my students but I realized through that We don't trust our students. Would you trust your students with your body? I I can say yes now. And I've realized the more trust and belief you put in your kids, the more they can change the world. Mm -hmm. And my kids have done so many powerful things just within this past year alone. Now, have they solved world problems? No, but they've put a dent in them. And any dent in a problem is a dent that can cause a domino effect to take place later. And you empower them in this kind of, I mean, really personal kind of way. I mean, and, and, and developed obviously that relationship and they can use that yep. experience to be able to solve world problems later on. Because you already, you you said, I trust you. And as they continue to grow in this, as far as an, into adults, they can start using those those same experiences to be able to to conquer things that exactly. come in front of them. And, but it also let me realize that Uh, That problem, I had no answer to. And if our kids do not face problems with no answers now, Mm. how are they going to do it out in the real world? 
And those problems are the, the key to accessing innovation. We need to give kids giant problems. And the worst that'll happen is they come up with giant solutions. Mm. Or at least God, they fail good. spectacularly. And then <laughs> yeah. you learn a ton yes. from the face plant, yeah. you know? like yeah, That's what I talk my, about a lot. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my journey has been... We, we talk about being yin and yang and like Kathleen, you live in this alternate dimension where crazy <laughs> things happen. Like this does oh, not truly. happen to regular people. Um, so we, we kind of wrote together from this dual perspective of we both believe the same thing, but we believe it and we act it out from different perspectives. Um, so I learned to trust my kids just because teaching became so hard that mm -hmm. I thought, man, I can't do this by myself. And over time it dawned on me that like, wow, you guys have amazing ideas. And I really shouldn't be the only one spitballing up here. Like we should all be, we should all be inventing this. So we both believe that students are our partners. They're not our products. Yes. I don't go to school to create students. I go to school to work with my students and together we come up with incredible things. We just do it in different ways, Kathleen and I. So uh, we're going to be speaking to some first year teachers. We're putting together a panel uh, to actually talk on the podcast and what you just finished saying, though, about it being an authoritarian type of personality, I think that's super common. Mm -hmm. um, the whole thing about don't let your kids see you smile until November or whatever. Uh, the, you know what I mean? All these kind of like Kathleen's favorite phrases. Yes. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But that actually is still very prevalent mm -hmm. currently in our, in our, at least in the United States, as far as the educational system and, and the way that your mentor teachers, even if they're not specifically like a, you know, quote unquote, a mentor, but they're your colleagues. They might right. tell you that, like, you need to just lay down the law right from the beginning and all the way up until, and then you can pull back a little bit where your experience actually is telling you now, maybe that's not the, the right way to come into a class. Right. And I think, I mean, what we tried to do in Unlocking Heroes, was we tried to address, again, the duality. Like, yeah, you've got to trust your kids. But at the same time, my first year... I did the thing where it's like, okay, the kids are going to set the classroom rules, which kind of, it kind of works, but yeah. it doesn't work the way people tend to tell you that it will online. So we tried to talk about all 10 keys to unlocking heroes as look, here's the idea. Here's why it works. And oh, by the way, when it goes wrong, here are a couple of ideas for how to maybe adjust to that as well. Good. And I like that too, because too many, often we read through a book and we're going like, hell, I I can do this. <laughs> yeah. And you follow that as like an instruction. Oh, manual. yeah. Like you a, know, like a handbook. Like, Absolutely. This is going to happen in my class now because I'm following this yeah. exact same thing. And then when it blows up in your face because you didn't adapt it to fit you mm -hmm. and your yep. current group of students. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, uh, it doesn't even work. Yeah. Well, so I'm giving up. We sort of pitch ourselves like on our business cards. Kathleen says trainer of heroes, which means the students. <laughs> yes. And mine says trainer of teacher heroes. Nice. So we, we have kind of our, our specialties and we're both good at both things, but I really enjoy working with adults and saying, okay, what's the reality of your situation? Yeah. Having the kids all write the classroom rules didn't quite pan out because they need structure and they need guidance and you know, they are children. Um, and just finding that sweet spot is like one of my favorite things. Yeah, and we also give um, tools to teachers to, to work up to that because there's scaffolding even for teachers. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm, first year I'm hanging on by my bootstraps and just praying I can make it to the end of the year. Yeah. And so like even with empowerment, um, the idea of flow charts, like, hey, start small. It doesn't have to be this big thing. Any any progress that you make is still progress. Yes. And we need to celebrate that. We need to stop the silos in education and we need to come together. Like look at the two of you doing this podcast. Together you are stronger. Mm -hmm. you, you absolutely you are stronger together. And so the more that we collaborate and work together and it's not about one person getting the credit, it's about everybody. It's about helping and serving. Mm. If we change that focus, we can change the world. If we eliminate the self and the selfishness and just realize, hey, I can help somebody and we don't care who gets it, that's where the magic is. Amazing. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to put the book in yes. the show notes. Um, can you also share with everyone just how to connect with yeah, you on, be able to connect with on you Twitter guys. or whatever? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on Twitter I am at 
Kathleen, C-A-T-H-L-E-E-N, Beach, B-E-A-C-H, B-D. Um, and yeah, so that's me on Twitter. I, and, yeah, and as the yang half of this situation, I have a lot of social connections. If you got it, I probably do too. But my <laughs> handle is always at Dawes Claws. So it's okay. just my last name and then like the English group of words that have meaning because I thought rhyming was cool my first couple of social awesome. years. <laughs> Break so it down. At, at Dawes Claws. I actually have had students who have started calling me Dawes Claws. And I'm like, well... I did do this to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> thank uh, you, guys. Kathleen, Marin, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you so guys much. Are, you so guys are cool. awesome. Thanks for listening to On Education. My name is Mike Washburn. My co-host is Glenn Irvin. Want to get in touch with us? Check out our website at oneducationpodcast.com. You can tweet us at oneducationpod. Glenn is at Irv Spanish on Twitter. I can be found on Twitter at Mr. Washburn. You can find us on Facebook by visiting facebook.com slash oneducationpod. We're also on Instagram at oneducationpod. If you're enjoying the show and think others would too, we'd be thrilled if you shared it with them. Please leave us a rating or review in Apple Podcasts or on the Google Play Store. When you leave a rating, it gives our rankings a boost. This helps others discover the show. We want to thank our presenting sponsor, Classcraft, for supporting us. Check out classcraft.com slash on education to learn more about them. Thanks as always for listening. Stay awesome. See you soon.